I think a lot about Meteor, the purity of them. Boom, the end, start again. The world made clean for the new man to rebuild. I was meant to be new. I was meant to be beautiful. The world would have looked to the sky and seen hope, seen mercy. Instead, they'll look up in horror because of you. You've wounded me. Welcome everybody, I'm RJ of the Nerdy Brew, and here on this channel we talk TV, movies, and everything in between, all while drinking a cup of coffee. Now if you like one of those things, or all of those things, why don't you consider like, subscribing, and hit that notification bell, and becoming a fellow Brewster. So today, fellow Brewsters, I wanted to have a cafe a blow, a coffee talk, <laughs> um, and thank you for stopping by. And I hope everything is well with you. Thank you for having this cup of coffee with me. But I want to talk about DC Studios. Earlier this year, James Gunn, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy films, um, and his production partner, Peter Saffron, they are the heads of DC Studios. That is owned by Warner Brothers. James made an announcement video that moving forward with his slate will be chapters, and the first ones will be called gods and monsters that will start with superman legacy and i did a breakdown of that video uh how that might look so he announced that there will be a peacemaker season two and amanda waller will also get her own show so both of those characters are from the snyderverse Viola Davis has been Amanda Waller, both Suicide Squad films, also Margot Robbie, and then Viola Davis also had her appearance in Peacemaker season one. And Peacemaker is a direct sequel to James Gunn's Suicide Squad. <laughs> What makes this all confusing at the end of his show, Snyder's Justice League appears in that show. So then there's the Flash, and that's Aquaman as well. Then we have the Ed and Shazam, and the Peacemaker characters are there to introduce the JSA that was also in Black Adam. Now, in The Flash, the first part of the movie takes place within the Snyderverse. Batfleck is there and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman is there. Sorry I'm late. Oh. Watch your step. Nice suit. Looking good, Flash. Uh, thank it... you. are welcome. My ego's far too big to say thank you to someone else who developed this. I too have childhood trauma. I serve truth. Never gets old. I know sex exists. I've just never experienced it. Well, I have to run. Always a pleasure. The sex thing was a metaphor. Then he has his movie. I liked it, by the way. Uh, the multiverse is a thing now. And George Clooney is back as Bruce. But Jason Momoa is still Aquaman. And Ezra Miller is still The Flash. So the other day, Gal Gadot was, Gal Gadot, excuse me, was promoting her new film and said that she was doing Wonder Woman 3. I love portraying Wonder Woman. It's, it's so close to and dear to my heart. And, and from what I heard from James and from Peter is that we're going to develop a Wonder Woman 3 together. Then the news reported from James Gunn, like, nah, that's not going to happen. They're remnants of the Snyderverse, but they want to add something new. That's like adding bad seasoning to another bad dish. So with all of it being such a hodgepodge of a mess, uh, the best you can do is start fresh. So here's where I come in. So if Warner Brothers were to ask me in my mind, you came to the right guy, right? <laughs> and we start off fresh MCU model, but this is an alternative 
reality isn't there isn't any competition between Marvel and DC and I'm someone in Hollywood with authority to run a cinematic universe and I have a hat too <laughs> and so in this video I'll speak specifically about my phase one slate and the actors uh, to portray the heroes um, similarly to how the MCU was at Hall H and they did their introduction for the Avengers and who the cast was gonna be. So that's what we're gonna do here. This is not gonna be a long video, but we will start with the slate. So first and foremost, what we're starting with this cinematic universe, we're going to start with Green Arrow. So now Green Arrow is going to get the Iron Man treatment. Now he's been more popularized um, later years. He had one episode inside of Super Friends, but then they brought his character back in the JLU. Um, so people who were able to watch that show or growing up with that show, they saw him on there. Um, he's always been a mainstay in comics, um, but they, they widened out his character in more media, um, especially to let people know that he exists. But he's not one of the mainstays. He's not the Flash. He's not Batman or Wonder Woman or Superman. So, you know, he, he's not a, a bigger tier. So you like, why are you starting out with Green Arrow? So Green Arrow, how this is gonna work within my universe is that he's going to get the Iron Man treatment in the sense of being a lower tier uh, superhero that's not in the zeitgeist. Um, even though, you know, we had Stephen Amell as Arrow, in my particular world, Arrow, that, that show doesn't exist. We are living in the multiverse, in an alternative universe. RJ's mind is going to work. And we're going to have him be in the forefront. And the story that I kind of see it would be reminiscent of Batman Begins. What that entails is him uh, learning and him confronting his villain. Um, and then also it's going to be an origin story for him, but it's also laying the foundation. And with it being an origin story, it's not just the origin story for Green Arrow himself. It's an origin story to set up how this world is interconnected. Um, and as we move forward with my phase one, I will specifically talk about how I envision these movies. But right now, this is just an announcement video. So first and foremost, we're going to start with Green Arrow. And after I say the slate, uh, how I want to release the movies, I will tell you my cast. Um, so stay tuned for that. So then we'll have Book of Batman Volume 1. So Batman has his own story, but it's going to be building on the arc of the phase that was started in Green Arrow. And the Book of Batman Volume 1, so having it as the Book of Batman, we will have different chapters, we will have different points in his life um, to culminate uh, as the character uh, to have a well-rounded story and a well-rounded Bruce Wayne and a well-rounded Batman. And there's certain elements that happen in Batman's life that um, I kind of want to touch into um, and kind of break it down um, as a movie with like a chapter book narrative, you know? Um, and that that's what kind of will make that version unique but at the same time this is also me with my creative licensing of molding how this batman will interact and and what and what molds his story um to make him his own unique batman for this universe so even though it's building off of what we started um is definitely isolated for who he's gonna be as Batman and what the movie and the story is. So then we'll have The Flash. All of these got subtitles, by the way. But next we have The Flash, the fastest man alive. The point of this movie will be the start of metahumans in this universe. Um, how are we able to have these two grounded um, vigilante, uh, you know, real world heroes, uh, metahumans work, how do his powers work, how do these villains work in the in this kind of world 
and we'll just have the flash as a linchpin where he starts off with his own dealing with his his powers um we kind of didn't have that within the ezra miller flash movie and so we can have like an origin story for the flash but because it's the flash um, we're gonna introduce metahumans as well um so it doesn't seem out of the world of extraordinary right so we could weave it in naturally to have this uh to to be inside the world so it'll be the start of that of the flash the fastest man alive then we're gonna get into wonder woman in the mystics if that makes any sense um i'm still trying to think about the intricacies of it um plot for plot narrative but basically it's introducing magic and the supernatural in this world um it might not be a wonder woman origin story but it will make basis of how magic exists and it is also like these characters have been here and why we need them and also how i see it will be like a civil war already in phase one where it's a culmination of different heroes but it's also still building on um the connected universe and the storylines that we're building through but yes it's going to be a big movie it's going to probably be like justice league 1.5 just dealing with more of the mystical aspects of the characters and dealing with um magic inside this world and, and what it is but it's definitely wonder woman's story and how she needs to deal with it so that's wonder woman and the mystics so now we get to green lantern corpse rage of atrocities so that is going to be introducing green lantern green lantern lore um, and also aliens and the cosmic. I'm kind of thinking about having it as a two-way story of two different time periods and then and then converging in the present day. But that will also be a um, culmination movie um, of different characters. And then also, you know, there's different spectrums. And with it being different spectrums um, of this this cosmic light, this emotional spectrums that they have. Uh, all these different green lanterns or these different lanterns um if you have atrocities dealing with the rage and then it's also a foundation of why um and for those who don't know there's history eons ago or eon ago of how the guardians of the universe they had their manhunters and manhunters were the precursor to Green Lantern and, and how they ended up malfunctioning and doing what they do. That's something that we're gonna try probably build into and for him to have his his vengeance and, and his reasoning to, you know, have his rage. But also it's building on the spectrum and where we're gonna go for the Green Lantern saga, um, however that may look. So that would be Green Lantern Corpse rage of atrocities and in introducing the cosmic aspect of this galaxy but but last but not least is gonna be superman last son of krypton so you're like yo how are you saving big blue for last well he's not last but it's gonna be last of the individual movies right um the thing is it's gonna be a superman origin story and it's also for this world for superman is going to be him being inspired by the other heroes so all the things that happened prior brings a revelation to our world and superman as clark kent sees this and he decides to use his abilities um as everyone else is that's why it's very important for green arrow and batman to be introduced um so they could have a basis of having inspiration for the other heroes of being just regular dudes. So I don't know if, the, I don't know, you know, the heroes would know that just yet, but they'll be seeing that these two men have started, you know, taking action to these things and everybody will be inspired by what they did. So the Flash does it as well. And so then we'll also have, you know, Superman who's also inspired by that. But I, I haven't really thought about how much of his movie should be. Uh, of what the backstory is or the 
most likely Lex Luthor, but it's definitely an introduction and it's a Superman origin story. It wouldn't be a Clark Kent origin story in the sense of old Krypton exploded and his time with his family. You know, it's very important to know his time in the Midwest of Smallville and his characteristics. But I just think the quality of character for him to already feel like he needs to be Superman, yeah. But has this Superman been tested? So that's probably the direction of what that film would be is that Superman being tested. But now we're gonna get into the final culmination of where everything was leading to would be Justice League, Injustice for All. That's, what, that, that's where everything is leading up to. So, Justice League and Justice for All is a Legion of Doom would be the bad guys for this film. And it's like, how do these heroes work together, divided? And I was just thinking in my mind, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was gonna do a video, or I was just thinking and I was pondering, right? Yo, I think that the Masters of Evil should have been the first set of villains inside the Avengers of the MCU. But I was like, wait a minute, I could create my own. Uh, you know, what, what does that look like? And I was like, yo, just flip it with the Legion of Doom. And I was like, yo, I know exactly how that would look. If we do have the Legion of Doom, and who who would be pulling the strings? And most of y'all might think Lex Luthor, but no, I'm changing stuff up to definitely make it my own story with elements that are already inside DC. But what this slate does is not having it wishy-washy with a little bit of this with a, with a little bit of that it's fully connective tissue um each one you can consider it as chapters or how you consider the mcu the mcu least phases one through three were uh was one long television series um, and I think Civil War was a great season finale, you know? So when they made it to these pivotal moments or even what, Age of Ultron, you know, these things were, uh, well, I have, but I'm saying it was a season finale. Age of Ultron was a season finale. So you have these season finales, you know? And I was just thinking, having it follow through, this is, this is so-and-so's episode, or this is The Flash's episode, this is Wonder Woman's episode, this is The Green Lantern's episode. Okay, so all of these through lines come together. Here, here's this TV show and here's this finale. Um, so basically from that model. So that's how I always see it coming together and how do they come together and how are they divided and what does it look like, who they are separately, um, in, in an extraordinary situation. So that's what my plans are for the entire slate. But let's talk about the cast of the heroes of this world. And so first and foremost, I wanna talk about Alex Pitifer as my green arrow. So Alex Pitifer was in uh, I Am Number Four and he was in the first Magic Mike. Um, don't ask me how I know about that, but I'm just saying that I do. Actually, I'm gonna just be honest. I had a girlfriend at the time, we went to go see the movie. I was nice enough to go do that. But with all that being said, uh, who he is now, uh, you know, he's a dirty blonde, he's, he's a young and handsome man. And also, with these characters, I'm trying to get as comic book accurate as possible. So the, that's what's going to be with the rest of the cast. So that's what I'm thinking about is um, Alex Pitifer, but I will have Ethan Peck as Batman Bruce Wayne because of his work as Spock in New, in New World, in Strange New Worlds. It seems this particular group of Valyrians wanted to join the Federation. As Federation law forbids genetic manipulation, this group was attempting to reverse its DNA modifications to gain entry, de-engineering themselves, as it were. His characterization of being Spock, uh, I just feel like, uh, and, and his body build and his dark hair. He's uh, also Gregory Peck's uh, grandson as well. Um, famous actor from, from old school Hollywood, for those who don't know. But uh, definitely Ethan Peck as my Bruce Wayne, and that's who we'll envision for carrying through. Uh, just because of his work that in Spock and I recommend that show if you're not watching it two seasons 20 episodes that you could binge right now and It's just a real fun show. So I recommend it, but 
if you want to see him, I, I recommend Star Trek, but it's Ethan Peck. Glenn Powell as Barry Allen uh, slash The Flash. I think he has the more classic look of what Barry Allen looks like, um, especially how they have Barry Allen in the New 52. And I read the majority of The Flash run of the New 52. Actually, I did. I, I read them all of those <laughs> issues of the flash in the new 52 um yeah I, I think that he would be a good characterization i was actually teeter tottering with him being hal jordan who's also the green lantern um i was like yo he could be from his work in top gun and from his work in devotion i was like yo he could be a really good green lantern he could be a very good green lantern but i thought about my my plan of continuing to have character accuracy and i think for the best of pulling page to screen i think that he would be the best as barry allen um as the flash now it's eva eva d dominici uh as wonder woman or deanna prince and i watched the cleaning lady that's on fox it's on hulu has two seasons um and she is Hmm, her character is a supporting character in the show, but because of her performance in the show, her performance in the show and what we got from Gal, I've always considered Wonder Woman American. Uh, maybe because her characterization from the old 1970s show, or maybe because her characterization in Justice League, I've always thought of her just being an American-based hero, but because we have Gal Gadot, it, that doesn't have to take place. That doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just thinking about someone ethnic and somebody exotic. The actress is Argentinian, so it'd be fine for an accent uh, to be present. And yeah, that's who I would cast as, as Wonder Woman. Now, Green Lantern, I'm gonna have two in my movie. Um, I think that's the one thing that James Gunn got right of having like a true detective story. Um, mine is gonna be more of a spy espionage uh, threat kind of story, but it's Chris Pine and Trevante Rhodes as these Green Lanterns. Uh, Chris Pine would be Hal Jordan, older Hal Jordan, seasoned Hal Jordan, who has been doing the job for quite some time in his absence for us to not know he's been off he's been off earth he's been off planet he does protect but he just hasn't been around and Trevante Rhodes will be the rookie but the difference in their personalities crux of the problem because Trevante Rhodes would be very military and very rigid um, Chris Pine would be very much his characterization as uh, Captain Kirk where lackadaisical, I don't believe in no-win situations. Um, I know how to rise to the occasion at, at the particular time, but I know that I have to come out on top. But Trevante Rhodes, as Jon Stewart, would be more military-minded, uh, more rigid, more focused, and he's a rookie, so he's not gonna be as laxed in dealing with the situation. So that's who I would cast as Green Lantern. Uh, Chris Pine and Trevante Rhodes, but that's just for phase one the the movies and my ideas will turn totally different when it comes to Justice League you know, We'll talk about it when we get to the Justice League film and then I have Trey Tucker as Clark Kent Slash Superman now you're like who is this Trey Tucker? I watched the show Hills. I talked about it in my top 10 shows of 2021 and He plays a character in there named Bobby Bobby, Bobby Pins, I think. I think that's his wrestling name is Bobby Pins. But his character, first of all, he's a big, solid dude. I think he's like 6'3 in real life. But he a big dude. But his character, his characterization, upsetting events. He goes through a lot of upsetting events within the show. And he doesn't break his character. He doesn't become bitter. He doesn't become vengeful. Um, and his character is, is full of Southern house vitality. Um, and just how he carries himself, his build, his facial structure, all of that, I can see him being Superman. And like right now, he's kind of built like how Tom Welling was in the later seasons of Smallville. And currently, you know, depending if he wants to get in shape or not, I can see him, his current body build, or if he wanted to get in Superman shape, he has the capabilities of doing that as well. And just his characterization as, as Bobby Pins, 
is an archetype um, example of how he would destroy the role of Clark Kent. And the thing is, the only difference of his characterization as Bobby Pins from Clark Kent is that he has a deep Southern Georgian accent uh, within the show. Y'all need me. Bobby Pins, get your funky ass ready. Come on. Cause ain't nobody in the DWL that could do this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> New guy, <sighs> what's the matter with you? Huh? Why ain't you hurt? Cause it didn't hurt. Okay. From the top? Get your ass up there. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry. I don't know. What was that you saw in the pain? That's really good, man. No, asshole, that shit really hurt. Oh, what did I do wrong? Um, and I know that he's acting. So if you were to tone down or get rid of that that accent and just have him have a generic American accent, it's the same character. And now how do we put that character inside of Superman? So that's what I see of him becoming uh, a Superman. So that's gonna be my cast of all of those actors that we just went through of who would be inside of my DCMU. So thank you for sitting down and having this cup of coffee with me, having this conversation with me. Um, let me know your thoughts, all of them. I'll take all the thoughts. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to Chef Matt Reviews. Um, I will link down, well, he commented last video, and I also will leave a link to his channel. Um, he's a friend of the channel. Um, we, we worked on a project together and also um, I've reacted to some of his fan made trailers so I'm going to also link it at the end of the video please if you're new here go look go look around have some more coffee with me we have some more stuff on the channel um, help us with some watch time um, help us with some likes um, yeah we'll, we'll just do that and also you know, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Do all the things that YouTubers ask to do. Um, and if you happen to subscribe, look at the community page. At some point, I'm going to make an announcement really soon. My stuff ain't been circulating how I need it to be. Um, I guess I'm not trending that much. But uh, that that's neither here nor there. But if you happen to come along, thank you for doing so. I definitely appreciate it. Trying to still grow out the channel. Um, and as I said in my last video, um, link. <laughs> is that uh, I'm trying to transition my life to try to do this full time definitely um, I love doing it and I like doing it and I just appreciate your help in that venture um, so we can make it happen um, but with all that being said I'm going to bring this video to an end and I want you to be you do you see the bigger picture have a fantastic day because you deserve it this is that channel On top, on top, come through, Bruce Lee chop, yeah. moon rocks, no red socks, tryna go far like boondocks, headshot, blood stay yeah. hot, talking shit, gotta pull up on they block, you fraud, I'm couch guard, nigga got a tax like a state charge, safe house, safe house, safe house, safe house, safe house,